Hello, Mike Waller at Tanya Motorcycles here. We've just uh, been fitting the wheels into our trials bike, so you saw me uh, making up the necessary bushings and spacers and torque arm brackets and so on. This video we're going to talk about the actual wheels and I'm going to lace and true the ones for the Yamaha. But I'm also going to go through some information about rims, hubs, spokes and all sorts of things you'll need to know if you're going to start uh, changing wheels and changing rims and, and that sort of stuff. So let me zoom in a little bit and uh, we will start explaining something basic about wheels. Here we have your Common or Garden spoke wheel. Very popular ones even on cars and obviously the uh, standard fitment to motorcycles. Now a wheel in its construction is a little bit like a suspension bridge in that the individual parts aren't necessarily that strong, but when designed correctly and put in tension, they produce a very strong hole. So, let me just quickly run through a couple of misconceptions about wheels. First one is, the bike does not sit on these spokes. The weight of the bike actually hangs from these. If you wanted to, you could make a wheel with only four spokes. One at the top, one at the bottom, and one at each side. The wheel would hang from the top, quite happily, but of course it would try to deform the rim, which is what these two spokes are for. They stop the rim deforming, so they keep the top part of the rim where it should be, and therefore the wheel is, is structurally sound, and the weight of the bike can hang on the wheel spindle. The one at the bottom, to be quite honest, isn't really necessary. But of course the wheel spins, so you need to have spokes all the way around so that there's constantly the spoke at the top and one at each side. But as you'll notice, the spokes don't go at right angles to the centre. They're all at these various angles going backwards and forwards. And this is because there's also um, a reaction in the wheel. The wheel's normally got a rubber tyre on and the whole point of the tyre is to have a frictional grip on the, the road surface or whatever the bike is uh, is the wheel is running on and rubber of course is used because it has a very high coefficient of friction so it causes a lot of drag so when the bike is trying to push forward the wheel is trying to stay where it is so the hub will try to move and that's the reason that uh, these clever people that design these sort of things have the spokes at these various angles crisscrossing they also are needed this way because the next big torque reaction is if you put the brake on then you're trying to stop the wheel spinning but the wheel wants to keep turning so if you just had straight spokes they would just bend all the way around so they cross in in these patterns in order to give the strength in in all directions by the way if i'm telling you something you already know in any of these videos bear with me because hopefully we have some people who are new to uh, to bikes and bike building so now we're going to look at the, uh, the three main components, well the only three components really, the hub, the spoke and the rim. I'll zoom you in even closer and we'll look at the way rims are dimpled and drilled and uh, the spokes and the hubs. There have been a number of different uh, types of hub used over the years and uh, one of the commonest ones for quite a while now has been this type of hub. It's the same as uh, the one in the TY front wheel that we're going to use. Basically the thing about this one is it's got the integral brake and it's symmetrical. The flanges that the spokes go on are both the same diameter so they're the same distance from the rim so the spokes are going to be the same length. And they're also equidistant from the centre line of the wheel. So this hub is really easy to lace up and true. And because it's uh, so common, and actually this is basically the same idea as if you had a disc brake wheel, you would have just a spool hub, of course, with no brake uh, drum in it, but it would be symmetrical in the same way, in that the spokes would be the same length and it would be, they would be equidistant from the centre line. So most younger wheel builders now, unless they've actually worked with some older type wheels, which I'll show you in a second, always expect their wheels to be set up so that the rim is going to be central over the uh, the hub 
and therein lies the problem because sometimes they aren't and um, before I was doing my own when I didn't have uh, all the workshop facilities when I was sort of still doing my real job um, I'd taken a couple of wheels along to people and they honestly didn't know what I meant when I gave them the size for the offset the measurement for the offset they thought no you just set it up um, directly above the hub and everything's right but that's not the case so let's have a look at a, another type of hub this is a, a clever idea it was what was known as the QD hub which stood for quickly detachable this one is a BSA one it's the BSA crinkle hub so called because of the uh, crinkly finish to the two sides where the spokes go in it's a spool hub and this one would be set up symmetrical with the rim but the uh, brake drum and the sprocket aren't attached to this rim hence the QD here oh this thing wears a tongue is the brake and the sprocket these can be with this nut here can be fastened into the swinging arm and just left there so you don't have to disturb them at all and you uh, just want to work on the wheel and the way it works is in the center of this hub there are splines and there are matching splines on the spool hub so this is uh, nice and safely bolted into the swinging arm you haven't had to take the chain off or anything but if you wanted to take the wheel out there would be a spacer in this size this side this side which would be the same length slightly more than the depth of the splines so that you would take this spindle out and then take this the space would come out then you could just take the hub pull it off the splines and the wheel would come out very nice idea and of course like all good ideas now passed over now another type of hub which is quite common com, quite common got my good set of teeth in I think when I'm uh, talking to you is the conical hub this is the uh, BSA B50 type B25 and the first thing you'll notice about it is that the two sides are not the same in diameter this side is smaller than that side so our first difference is unlike the spool hubs we're not going to have similar sized spokes but what's even more important is that because the brake drum is integral with it and the sprocket you'll notice that the easiest way to show this this side is very close in fact the the spokes are on the inside of the edge of the rim but here they're on the outside so with this wheel if you if you laced it up on this center line you'd find that you were uh, way out because this would be pushed in to get these spokes on this side the same distance from the rim as from that side so that's the thing to watch out for and that is why when we come to get our reel ready we're actually going to measure the offset of the rim so that we know exactly how far off center line it's going to be when we build it up so let's start looking now at the, the rim itself now if you've ever wondered why some rims have 40 spokes and some rims have 36 it's because the spokes are a number of spokes are a multiple of four there are four directions for the spokes to be in so 9 4 is 36 10 4 is 40 and this is the purpose of the dimples if we didn't have the dimples then the spokes would be just pressed up against a flat surface and they wouldn't give you a very good uh, grip the dimple of course on this side really is like a countersink so that the nipple can fit in and have a good area pressing against the rim now as I said there are four spokes so consequently there are four drilled holes in series around here and this is why you can't just buy any old rim if you need a new rim and you look on eBay and there's an 18 inch 40 hole rim don't just rush out and buy it these holes are drilled at specific angles to match the hole 
and the angle that the spokes are going to come off. And as I say, there's a pattern to them. I don't know how well you can see this. This one points to this side and it points backwards. This one points to the other side and it points backwards. This one points back to this side, but it points that way, points forwards. And this one points out the other side and points forwards also. Then the fifth spoke here, we're back to pointing out this side and pointing towards us and so on around. So you've got to make sure that your brim matches your hub or you're going to end up with spokes that come out and look like bananas because you're trying to force them into the correct pattern. Um, one other thing I'll mention with rims is that um, the dimples are punched and then the holes are drilled. But naturally the dimple is actually bigger than the size of the disc that it's of the, the rim that it's made of. So it thins the metal. And where it's drilled, the metal is considerably thinner. If you take a peel to be re-chromed, the first thing they'll do is sand it and polish it to make it nice and shiny again because chrome is very thin and the least little imperfection, even worse than paint, will show up through, through the chrome. So the rim has to be polished as good as the finished chrome is going to be. And what can happen is, if it's a badly corroded rim, they can actually polish so much metal off that the hole in here will get bigger. And I've seen them where the correct size nipple will just fall through. Now there's a couple of different size nipples. If you're lucky, um, the rim might have used the smaller size nipple, so even though the hole's got a bit bigger, you're all right. But if the rim and the spokes need to take the larger nipple, uh, you might find that you just simply ruined the, uh, the rim. And to be quite honest, you can buy rims probably cheaper than you can get them chromed and there's a, you know, uh, there's a couple of places in the UK and here in the States, Buchanan rims, who will make a rim that looks just like the Jones or uh, Dunlop type rim. So, there's the rim. We've looked at the hub. Next thing is the spokes. Now, I would advise you to be careful where you buy your spokes. I'm just going to use this as a little background. Because of the way these spokes come out, these obviously have to point that way. So the angle of the spoke hook with its neck is it's going to come out and then it's going to go that way. So it's going to be, it's going to be quite an acute angle. Whereas this one is going to go straight and then that way. So it's going to be an obtuse angle. It's going to be more than 90. This one's going to be less than 90. A lot of places you buy spokes now, although they might be the exactly correct length and gauge, they just bend them all to 90 degrees. Now here you'll see the ones for the TY wheel. And I hope you can see there the difference in the angle. This one's basically 90 degrees, this one's bent further round. And I have in the past bought spokes where I've had to re-bend every single one. There's a little tool for doing these, which virtually nobody has, but if you do buy a set of spokes and you find that the neck angle isn't right, all you need to do is get yourself a piece of steel plate about an eighth of an inch. Um, with my typical planning, I can't find mine, and then close to the edge of it, drill a hole the size of your spoke. It's got to be close to the edge because you're going to feed the spoke through. Oh, I'll tell you what. Here we go, look, I will make one immediately. You're going to feed the spoke through, put it in, and then bend it. And you've got to put it close to the edge so that you can get it back out. If you put it down there, you wouldn't be able to get the spoke out. And then you can just bend them to where you want. Providing, of course, you have an original spoke to go by. So just something to, uh, to keep in mind with, with spokes. Put it with the right lot. Okay, so there's our three components. The rim, the hub, and the spokes. And they've all got to be matching up. If they don't, as I say, you're going to end up with spokes that are bent, that don't go in the right direction. And the wheel will be, A, very difficult to true, but also, of course, it won't be as strong because there's already going to be a bend. Instead of being able to nicely tension a straight spoke, 
what you're going to do is if there's already bend in it, when it tensions it, boing, it's going to do that. So slowly they'll come loose and then the wheel will probably collapse. Alright, can't honestly think of anything else to talk about there. The next thing is to get a wheel out and we'll show you what you need to do to prepare yourself for re-sporking and truing. So, we're going to uh, use the back wheel as the example to show you what you need to do for lacing up, truing a wheel, or if you're going to take a wheel to someone else to do it. Alright. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is, as I mentioned, find out the offset. And I always use the brake drum side for this, for the simple reason that, as you can see, it's nice and easy to put that on there, whereas very often on this side you don't have an easy place to put it. I mean you could put it on there, but it's such a smaller diameter, it's much nicer to have your straight edge resting on, on two edges which are a nice distance apart so that you keep perfectly flat. So what you do is, as I say, you put a straight edge on and you measure. Now normally you will find, or depending on how, how big the hub is, you will find that there's a gap here. And, but as you can hear, this one, the gap actually is zero. Now sometimes, for instance on uh, Triumph Twin, uh, some of their front wheels, the uh, the hub, instead of being slightly proud of the rim, is below. So this would be a negative. Uh, what you'd have to do is get a straight edge long enough to go right across the rim on the edges and then measure the gap there. It's something stupid like a 64th of an inch. Why the engineers couldn't just make the hub a 64th of an inch wider so at least it was uh, flat like this one is, I don't know. But that's the first thing we're, uh, we're going to do. So just out of interest, we will uh, pull this one up. Here's the front wheel. And this one, you can see there is a gap there. And also on this one, I can show you that even with this little spacing piece out, it's it's a lot, you know, it's so easy to, when you're concentrating on taking your measurement, you start to come off there a little bit. So use the brake drum side, and then you have a nice flat thing to press it on, and you're not going to, uh, to wobble. So that's the first thing you've got to do. Measure the offset. The next thing you need to know is the pattern of the spokes. Now, I want you to be able to see the pattern at the top and also be able to see uh, the way I draw it out. So I'm going to move the camera up slightly. Um, I would say that if you're going to take a wheel to a wheel builder, as I mentioned, the best thing to do is to take the wheel. If you're just getting a new rim, just take the new rim along, take the new wheel, take the new spokes and give him the whole thing. It costs you a little bit more because he's got to... Uh, break the wheel down but to be honest he'll just as I'm going to do he'll just cut the spokes out it will all take him no time at all but if you're wanting to polish the rim as I'm going to do here and the hub if you want to do some work it's even a good idea to take the complete wheel along to your wheel builder say I'm going to want you to rebuild this wheel and let him maybe take some pictures or take some measurements and then take the wheel away do your bits and pieces and then take him the hub the rim and the spokes and he'll know what he's, uh, what he's got to do to get you back to the way the wheel was. So, yeah, don't just turn up at the, the, uh, the wheel builders with a nice shiny hub and the rim and a set of spokes because if he's worth his money, he will not be particularly happy. He will like to know exactly how the, the rim is laced and uh, where the rim sits in uh, relationship to the hub. So let's move the camera a little bit and we'll show you... Um, what to do about the way the, the spoke pattern is. Now we need to look at the 
spoke pattern and there are three things we've got to record here. Um, I always make a little drawing. I suppose in this day and age I should whip out my uh, smartphone and take a photograph but I don't own a smartphone. I own a nice old cell phone that just makes calls because that's all a phone should do. So what do we need to know? Well as I say we need to know three things. We need to know which way the spokes go, inner and outer. We need to know how many spokes cross and we also need to know whether the spoke holes on each flange are opposite each other. It's the one place where the, even these hubs aren't symmetrical. Now let's see if you can see here. If I push this spoke through here, it doesn't line up with the holes on the other side. They're slightly offset to each other. And you've got to get this right because obviously you put them in, you could be, if this was an inner spoke, you could be ahead of the inner spoke or you could be behind it. And if you don't get that right, then when you come to put the outer spokes in, you'll find suddenly the spokes don't reach the holes. And it's very annoying because it's usually the last set of spokes you put in and suddenly you've got to take the whole wheel back to pieces. So as I say, what I do is make a very simple drawing. All you need to do is draw your hub and then draw sort of another hub behind it. Let's take five holes here. One, two, three, four, five. Now the first thing we'll do is we'll look to see what the holes are like on the back side. And just with the hub I showed you, these holes here are slightly off. So we can just mark that so we can see that the holes are slightly off. Very important. Now the next thing is to know which way the spokes go. So let's start with the middle one. It's an inside spoke and it's going to the left. So the middle one is inside and it's going to the left. So the next one is an outer spoke and that's going to the right. The next one is another inner spoke so that's going to the left. And you see you can just draw them so you can see one's over and one's outside. That was an inner so this is going to be an outer going to the right and this one is an inner going to the left. Now the next thing we have to see is how many spokes we cross because it can be two or three. The front wheel is three spokes crossing and I'll put a little picture at the end of this section so you can see that. But here this spoke is crossing one spoke, two spokes and then it's at the rim. So we can see it in our diagram here. It's crossing one, it's crossing two. Now the next thing to look at is to see exactly how this other row of spokes works. So we look through behind it and we say okay here's an inner spoke. The inner spoke on the other side is one hole to the left. So this inner spoke here that would be an inner. So you can mark that. Obviously the inner's on the other side point in the opposite direction. So now you've got all three things you need to know. You've got that um, the inner Pardon this awkward writing. Goes to the left. We cross two spokes. And the inner opposite. Is to the right. Hope you could see all that. So that sets us all up for putting these spokes in the right way around. And believe me, this offset from one flange to the other really is important. Um, I mentioned earlier that with the original wheels in the B25, you could get a standard 21 inch rim and spokes. <clears throat> and the one wheel of those that I did do, when I got them, I could not lace it up. Didn't matter how I tried. I kept ending up that the last row of outer spokes would not go in. I took it to my a wheel builder I knew. By the time I'd driven home, he was on the phone to say, you've got the wrong rim or the wrong spokes, it won't lace up. 
I got in touch with my supplier and he said straight away, everybody says that, so much so that I've written instructions and got photographs and he emailed them to me and it was all in the way these spokes were laced up on the two flanges. You could lace it up so that it looked exactly right but it wouldn't finally go together. I sent the pictures off to the wheel builder and he phoned me back and says, oh, okay, it's gone together now. So that's it for what we need to know. We need to know the offset, the distance between a line across the drum and the wheel rim. We need to know the direction the spokes go in, how many they cross and what the offset is from one set of holes on one flange to the holes on the other flange. We're all ready now to cut this out and then I'll show you how to lace up and true it. <laughs>